team goes on a 25-0 run. Have you been part of of anything like that before as a coach? Well, you know, I don't know for sure, but it feels like we've had a few of those the last three games. Interesting, two games ago, Justin blocks it. Joe hits a three against Maryland. This game, Justin blocks it. Anthony Gill gets a a, a breakout, nice uh, dunk. And um, you remember Virginia Tech, I, you know, Justin dove on that ball. It started, there was something that started the momentum. But um, yeah, the way to finish, because Notre Dame was hard to guard. They did some things that were similar to what we do, um, very hard uh, chasing the screens. But I think a, a key stat is zero points off turnovers in the second half. They had 11 in the first half off of our plays. It, some of them, um, you know, the unforced errors we've talked about. In the second half, we tightened up offensively with the ball and tightened up defensively. Yes, they missed shots, but we, we had more of a presence defensively and played not just 25 seconds of the shot clock, but um, the, re the remainder, the entire, you, you need to do that, whether it's finishing on a block out or doing some things, and good lift from Darion, certainly, and, and, and all the guys. And you talk about Anthony's offensive output, impressive. Coach, to your right, I'm just, cu I'm just curious what it was that you, when you took Justin out there at the end, what, what was it that you, uh, that you whispered into his ears? Yeah, that's between us. Thank you. Uh, on, the, on the same uh, topic of, of Justin. Yep. What kind of license does he have as a shot blocker? I, I'm not sure that was his <laughs> guy who shot he blocked. Yeah. The, well, he's such an X, he's such an X factor guy that way. And if he can make a play, you've seen him. He comes out of nowhere um, when he can gather and go up. He can get way up there, and his timing's good as his Darian's. But um, you know, license. I if you go back to the Duke game, I think he tipped that ball, um, that hood shot. I think he tipped it with his fingertip, and it came down. It was an air ball, and came down to. Um, Jefferson, Joe was trying to block him out, and they kicked it to Rashid. And, and my point is, is he, he has an ability, and maybe that one he shouldn't have blocked. Maybe we would have gotten a better rebound. But he has the ability to track a ball, and certainly in transition. And um, but you know, we want him in the right position. And um, again, he, he made a play. And, and what I said to him, not trying to be coy, I, I don't want to um, tell you exactly what I said, but but I really think he's he's doing the things that are helping us win, and he's. He's doing some special things. I just let him know I kind of affirmed him that I, I liked what I saw and, and something a little more along the lines of between us. But um, I think he's given us a great lift these last two, three games, and I'm proud of him in that regard. And hopefully there's much more. Coach, in the first half when it was obviously much more competitive, just address Akil's play. He kind of yeah. steadied things for you. You look at that 7-7, seven seven and, and Bach told me coming in that our bigs were, what did you say, 14, 14 of 17 from the um, – from the floor scoring, um, you know, he, he got some positioning, whether it was against the zone or even the man, and, and scored some buckets and kept us in there. We, um, yeah, again, we just a couple times we slipped and fell, we over rotated, we ran out on a rebound, you know, Joe did a couple times and then lost track of Connington and just enough things that that is a skilled team and we had to just keep hanging in there and keep, keep hanging in there. But they have been in most games they've played. And um, they have that ability offensively. And you know they've played a few games, I think, in a shorter amount of time. And I don't know if their legs ran out on them. And the crowd was terrific. I mean, you could feel the electricity. And that, that's what you come back home for. You need that. Because you know this is that time of year when um, you got to dig a little deeper. Tony, you guys have had a number of close games that you just kind of blew open in the second half. Do you worry at all that the guys think that they have that in them every game? Um, no, I, I think, yeah, you can't. We talked about it a, a few times ago. You know, runs happen for us. We have to play every possession. And then maybe when the other team gets off track, that's when a run occurs. If we have the, the mindset, well, we can kind of we don't have to play every possession. We'll just go on our big run. We're mistaken. And I think um, some of those breakdowns, yeah, we got to look at. But um, I'm thankful for them. But, <clears throat> The higher, the longer this goes, you, you got to play at this time of year. You got to be in there every possession. That's what I was frustrated with at halftime because we played about 20 to 25 seconds of the possession and, and then broke down at the end. And uh, you know, worried. I, I mean, like I said, it's, it's nice to see him be able to to make those plays down the stretch and tighten up. But you're going to have to do it from start to finish, which I thought we did early. And then there was that stretch in the, the first half where we got a little shaky. David, Tony, you talk about process and a one-game approach quite frequently, but with only three games left in the regular season, you have a chance to do something that's only been done once here, and that's win the ACC outright yep. in the regular season. Is that a is that a goal? Do you talk to the kids about how special <laughs> yeah. that might be? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we you, you have to earn the right for that. 
Um, and you know, we talked about before the game, I said you've earned the right um, to have this tremendous opportunity in front of you this game. But in saying that, that means being in this position. And I just looked him in the eye and I said, are you going to waste it or are you going to make the most of it? And I said, and I don't mean are you going to win it or lose it. I said, are you going to make the most of it back to what we always talk about? Closing out high hands, playing the possession, worrying about the process, being faithful to that, and that has to be in front of us. Again, we use that step approach. That now we got three more. Next one significant. So, of course, that's a that's a dream, a goal, and we'll keep fighting for it. And I'm so thankful to be in this spot because uh, it has been a while. And I might I don't know if Dave Kane is still listening, but I might bust his chops a little bit at his radio show. He says his trivia question was. You know, it's been 31 or 30 years um, since the Cavaliers have, have were 13 and one, and they've never been 14 and one. I think this is accurate. He said, "Do you know who call in if you know or email and who broke that streak?" You know, I'm like, "Okay, fair question." Well, then they come back from the break. 31 years ago to the date, Notre Dame. And I'm like, you know, Dave, why are you putting that out there on us? So, he, so had we lost, it would have been Dave Kane's fault. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. But um, but it's um, but to be in this spot, um, absolutely, and. You know, you, you just, when that brass ring's coming around, you grab it, and that's what we're trying to do. The uh, Notre Dame went on the uh, spurt at the end of the first yeah. half that coincided with London picking up his second right. foul. Coincidence, or does that say something no. about London? Well, I'd say this. When he went out in the first half, absolutely. We, we made some careless turnovers, broke down. Um, but uh, in that situation, absolutely. But then in the second half, when we was out, when he was out, we made our run, and and he lost vision a couple times to start the second half. He just was kind of ball watching, and Malcolm was early, and those guys cut back door, and that's not good enough. But um, but yeah, London steadies us. He, he's terrific that way. But I, I was glad to see in the second half a large part of that run came um, with Justin igniting us, Joe Malcolm out there, and I think it was Anthony and you know Darian Akil, whoever it was at that time. But so it was kind of a both. Yes and no in the, in this game. Okay, three more. Tony, just uh, kind of touching on what Dave uh, asked, but uh, just talk about the the run you guys are on. Eleven straight ACC wins. That, that doesn't happen very often in this conference. Yeah, I, I mean, fortunate. Um, I think it's it's different guys at different times, and um, I, how they're doing it, how they're playing, and it's not. It's okay. It's it's a humble approach that they're taking to it. The guys, how they share the ball, how they're not worried about numbers, and to me, that's a beautiful thing. That's why you coach to have a group come together like this and play defensively, offensively in stretches like this. That doesn't guarantee it's going to happen, but in this stretch, as we can say right now, fashionably, they've really pulled together. And I wouldn't say we're the toughest team, but we're playing tough. Wouldn't say we're the the most uh, selfless team, but we're playing selfless. And, um, you know, there, there's something there that, you know, when you're around it, you're thankful for it. Again, for what I've seen so far, and that's as a coach, what I believe as far as how the game's to be played, uh, these young men, the credit goes to them and the staff too, just how they're playing. But that can change like that. And that's why you just say, all right, on to the next and prepare well in practice and get yourself ready, but thankful to be in this spot. Along that same lines, you played Justin and Gill 20 plus minutes off the bench. Coming in, do you have in your mind what's going to happen, or are you riding the hot hand with yeah. you do that rotation? I mean, you know, minutes are, they can vary, but you, I'm reading the game, looking at what guys are giving us and what rotations. And sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong, and rely on my staff. When I get it wrong, I rely on them. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, we talk about that a lot. Hey, what are we, what are we doing? So you, you have to feel it. Like Anthony was a, a matchup problem, and we had to get the ball to him down lower, get it in the high post. Darian was doing a good job defensively, bothering those guys. As was um, Justin, his, his pressure on the ball. So you just look at those things. You're buying rest for other guys, and and that's what's unique about this team: the balance. It can be anybody on on any given night. Coach, over to your left here. Mike Bray's teams over the years, they're so efficient offensively that they tend to make even good defensive teams look, look shaky at times. But you, twice this year, and even back when you were at Washington State, you, you seem to have a formula for, for stifling their offense. What's the, the key to slowing down Notre Dame? And yeah. How they, tough are they to do Well, they Coach Bray, they, they have skilled players. They move the ball. They pass. Um, it's, it's really the, the, the formula for us all the time is you, you try to limit them in transition. And you try not to give them points off turnovers, which we did in the first half while they're in there. But 
everything has to be earned. Um, and that's the try to impose your will possession by possession, whether it's bothering outside shots, controlling the lane. And then again, they ran some stuff where you could see they exploited us a little bit, doing some things we do in our offense. And uh, it just was going to be uh, a war that way. And, um, you know, it's, it's more it's when our guys are collectively playing it because we can't stop them one-on-one -on -one when we trap the post when we're in gaps. And, you know, the, the few times we played them, we've been fortunate that way, but um, very hard to guard for sure.